There's an article written by Cliff Whiting in a magazine called Te Aho, and it, the article said, the marae is my home. The marae is my place of work. The marae is my kindergarten to my university. The marae is my church, it's my museum. My art gallery is where I was born and where I'll be buried. That echoed a fair bit of my park upbringing. Everything is at home. So it, it's important to have their Māori, have Māori, all the things I didn't have when I was a kid. It was a shame to be Māori, and I want, want them to have all that, all the good stuff there. <laughs> there was a word, I'm just trying to think of the word when Putty was going, Dad, Daddy, she's looking at the street signs, what, what does koteon mean? Where, where do you see that word? The, oh, that's not Cotillon, darling, it's caution. The word is caution. And so she's saying it in a Māori way, you see. She's growing up Māori, saying it, she's saying Cotillon. So our first language was Māori, me and Pares anyway. Um, we went to a Māori school, Te Kirikopa Māori Nga Mokopuna, and there it was frowned upon to speak English. So you are constantly speaking Māori all the time. I can't compare it to growing up in a house in the suburbs because I've never experienced that. But I guess from the reaction of my, my friends coming here for the first time, I guess it's, it's obvious that it is a bit different. Um, but it was amazing. <laughs> I had an amazing childhood because I didn't only experience groups from all over the country. Um, of all sorts. I, I experienced groups from all over the world, really. There's quite a few things here that are not like uh, a lot of Māori. Even the shapes of the buildings. I got that from looking, uh, looking at history, Māori history. There were quite a few buildings of what, what you wouldn't call the normal Māori. The design of our one is of, of a mother and all her children, all little buildings sticking out all over the place. It's definitely not an average looking marae. I mean, we've been called the Māori Hogwarts. It's definitely a traditional marae in the sense of what, what it's used for, but not a traditional marae in the way it looks. He's taken on ideas from both worlds and he's fused them really well. Unfortunately, uh, Māori is not as, uh, in some places, not as progressive when it comes to building and designing and things like that. With still has to be designed like this, and it still has to look a certain way. And, and it's beautiful, and it's lovely holding on to culture and things like that. But yeah, sometimes things need to change and change up, and he was one of those pioneers for that.
I ended up in jail, um, all the negative things, I, I didn't resolve them. I've had different ways, of, but I still had that negative stuff. In jail, I got a really good, um, really good look. The guy come in to teach us um, a cup of haka, um, and uh, I joined up only because um, they went out for suppers. But something else happened. This guy who came in to teach us was a real deal. It's Amsterdam, and uh, for the first time, I met a Māori who was confident in being a Māori. And straight away, I wanted what he got. So I got out of jail with a dream that everything is at home. When I got out, I saw these kids on the, on the streets, Māori kids, and some were very young, and I knew they headed straight for jail. But I thought if I could help these kids, I could help myself. Um, a priest had a workshop where people uh, at a loose end would go to perfect their craft or their art or whatever. I, I took all these kids there. What happened, uh, uh, an alcoholic, very drunk, park our man went past these kids one Sunday in Hopper Street and they said, oh, you lazy black bastards, why don't you get yourselves an effing job? And two of them killed him, booted him to death. A few days later, after that, a limousine pulls up outside our workshop and it's Michael Fowler. The Mayor of Wellington with a chauffeur and a carton of bread and a pound of butter. He said, people in Wellington are terrified. What can we do? I said, we want to live Māori, that's what, that's what the problem is. And he said, OK, let's go. Because we didn't have any money, uh, it's fine to wait. What have we got that's local that we can uh, build a house with? Uh, it's easy, they're pulling a city to bits. Let's grab the bits. So it's slow going, but this place is um, it's just amazing. It's all hand-worked. Timber that's pulled out of buildings and worked by hand by the young people. They built the place, so we made a proverb up, Kei a rātou i hāngata whare, ki te whare hānga ngā tangata. They who build the house are built by the house. Young people who built this, for many of them, have built them. And we're still doing it. It's happening right now as we speak. That's uh, just on 40 years we've been here. Passion. Um, my dad bought the land off them um, quite a few years ago and spent years paying it off. And then when he was unable to work anymore to pay it off, um, they forgave him after that because of what he set forward in that plan was to give it back to the bush. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Look, and Sereddy. Boy, he used to bring a lot of groups here. That's when we got married. Look, marriage certificate sitting there. <laughs> I'm Fijian Indian and Māori, my mother's Fijian Indian, she's an Indian from Fiji. And obviously my father's Māori and it's a weird mixture, it's a rare one. And it's different because the two cultures just, they're the complete opposite of each other and they, they're not compatible <laughs> at all, so I don't understand how that happened. Mum's side is quite small, all her family lives in Fiji, most of them, a few of them stay on the marae. Thanks to Dad, he brought them over. And my dad's side, he has 13 kids. So I have six brothers and six sisters, one adopted. Um, I'm the youngest boy. There's one younger than me, she's 16. Her name's Kirika. So the youngest is 16 and the oldest is 56 this year. And so there's a lot in between as well. <laughs> the oldest of the oldest of the oldest just had a kid. She's the oldest of that generation now, so there's five generations alive at the same time. It's pretty neat. <laughs> Bruce is my grandfather through my mum. He's my mum's father. Uh, my mum is, is, is the first, is the oldest daughter, or oldest child of Bruce out of all the families. So we come from the first brood of kids that Bruce had. So a lot of his younger kids are the same age as my kids which is an odd concept, but it's a very, still very mouldy thing. My mum, Halima, she's, I guess, the manager of the whole place, if we had such a title. She's the main cook. She um, looks after my dad. She makes a lot of big decisions um, for him, him being sick right now. And yes, yeah, so she's his number one nurse, and she handles all the bookings. So yeah, she does a lot for the Marae. Today we are celebrating like after Ramadan, you know, after 30 days of fasting, we have got our New Year's festival. And New Year's festival, this is, this is like, you know, like people celebrating Christmas. And this is very important for me. And for me, I go through a lot of trouble to prepare everything, make sure it's, you know, um, it's uh, just set up nicely. Everyone comes for the feed. Like tonight, I might be expecting about 150 to 200 people. They're going to come in and out and just have something to eat and go, you know, it's just a celebrating. And we go for continue three days. Yeah, Nice and hot. Everyone has a different slant on living Māori. So that's, and everyone is probably legitimate. Uh, my, my version is um, um, we're living to the tikanga, and uh, tikanga are uh, ways, ways to live. One of the most important tikanga is manaki ngā tangata. The tohu rangatira or the marae is a, there's a proverb. What makes the marae a rangatira marae is how well you look after your visitors. We have a lot of manuhiri come through here, constantly, um, ever since I can remember, and way before I was even born. We get kids groups here, corporate groups, you know, heaps of different kinds of groups. There's a lot of people who can feel the spiritual energy, and then they come and approach you and they, they tell you about it. They always seem to tell you about it, and it's, it's awesome hearing it. And then there are people who appreciate the structure of it, you know, the architects and all those ones. And then they're just people who come because they're having their hooies here. <laughs> we have quite a few tangi come in um, when the space is needed for it, it's open. It's kind of an unspoken rule on the marae, they'd come first. 
So when there are hui's, we always let them know that if someone comes who's passed away, we might have to cut the hui short. It's a comfort zone for me. When the place is empty, that's when it's weird and a bit challenging. Um, and it doesn't happen often that the place is empty for a long period of time, but when it does, it gets really lonely. The kids know all those sounds. And my little girl, Kitty Hika, uh, she gets frightened if, it's, it's, if there's a sound, and that's a problem when you open your house up to everybody. And that's what we've done. We're hundreds of people come in. Not many people would do that. They open your house up to hundreds or 300 people. Normally, uh, most persons uh, would get a house and uh, get two or three beds, and that would be But what, what do we do? We're very poor, but we've got a house and 350 beds and 350 knives and forks and spoons and plates and so on and so on, and spaces for the beds to go in. Karioi is the, the reforestation program put in to look after the bush and make sure that we don't stray from the path that we chose at the start, that Bruce chose, which was to give it back to the birds and the ngata and just have it grow. And our main tikanga is called uh, kaitiakitanga. Kaitiakitanga is, is uh, looking after our resources, the planet, looking uh, finding that birds are very important, that trees are important, and fish are, and air, and water, and the earth. And so we've got a different whole look at that. I love what he's done. It's really awesome. And it's really empowering for um, a lot of the city, Māori. We spend a lot of time talking about oh, Māori need to do this, need to do that, but he's somebody, he's gone out there and done it, and he still gets flack from both sides of the fence. You know, if, if it was to start from scratch in today's laws and bylaws and building consents and stuff like that, you know, that place wouldn't happen again. So it's really a unique, unique position where the old man's in. Oh, yeah, oh, we haven't finished yet with the council. We built the place with our consent. I knew from experience that you weren't going to be able to build it with consent. And we got it um, a long journey and got it um, 
recognised in retrospect. As it stands right now, um, we're running at 50% capacity. Um, everything upstairs of the dining room is closed down at the moment due to the Dangerous Building Act. Um, just the way they kind of initially did it was just kind of showed up one night without any warning or anything and then we're closing you down. We had a group upstairs of some komatsu up in Ukaipo. We had to apologise and tell them that we didn't know how far our building's been closed down. Nothing like that has ever happened in my life, you know. You're staying on a marae for 20 years and then you just find out that, boom, just like that, half of it can't be used. But yeah, we're looking at getting it fixed up as soon as possible, working with the council to try to find common ground. My dad, in the original plan with the Sisters of the Home of Compassion, when he got the land, um, he wanted to build a village, a village where people can live Māori. Not a place to live, but a way to live. He wanted to take things back to how they were, where people live cooperatively with each other. Uh, there's a lot of my mukkos who haven't got houses and I can't see them ever getting a house in the current situation of this, of this country. I think we can build them here. We need to go at it quite quickly now. And the main reason is that um, I, I want to see it up and running for I'm dead. That's, uh, I hope, my swan song. Not done yet, but it's, uh, we want to see that going. The hardest part will be not the building, not all that, all that, not, is the people who believe it. You put the leaven in the bread. The leaven in the bread will be making sure the first people that go into their village are the, the giving type people who believe that. I think he's taken on that um, I can't go until it's finished. And I think he's right where he says that, you know, nobody's like him and that's true. Nobody is and nobody will ever be like him. When I was young, I was very, very strong. Thought I was bulletproof, nothing was ever going to happen to me. But it did. And when, they, when I went and got to the doctor, they said, oh, we can't do anything about it. And He's kind of restricted to his chair at the moment. But because we're, we all live so close, he's actually quite happy. We go there, have, sit down, have dinner with him. And I'm very, very lucky I'm surrounded by young people who look after me. Uh, normally, though, I'd be in some old people's home doing a brown, uh, getting around to sing Ba Ba Black Sheep. But I'm not. I'm like I'm living like a, um, uh, uh, what I want or how I want to live. I I hope that they uh, they're going to um, carry on. When I'm gone, I told them, uh, you know, I'm past my use by date. Uh, Māori's by and large live uh, 10 years less than Europeans and I'm, I'm way past that date. And I'm fighting hard to keep alive. Uh, you got to be ready to take over, you know, or is it you, you know? So, um, it's a work in progress. And that's uh, probably the the biggest thing is a work in progress. It's a, it's never finished.
I believe that there are enough of us who believe in his way to keep it going on. Just like how dad um, brought us up to carry on his legacy, that's how I'm gonna bring my kid up and I'm sure that's how Polly's gonna bring her kid up too. Just so I can just keep carrying on with the same ideals in the same way as it should. A lot of them might not know their grandfather, but um, don't know his will, don't know what he wanted to do and why. Oh